स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया today we will talk about some examples and applications of the universal property of free groups okay so we will do four examples today so let me skip to the very first one so here's the example or a problem uh, let s be a set and if we take two elements a and b in the set which are not equal to each other then the problem is the following prove that Uh, the equivalence class of a and the equivalence class of b are not equal in the free group f of s okay uh, a and b are unequal elements of the set s the question is to prove that when we take the corresponding equivalence classes of just the singleton word a and the singleton word b those two equivalence classes cannot somehow become equal in f of s another way of saying this is that the map j from the set s to fs that we talked about in the universal property that map is in fact injective so this is the map x going to the equivalence class of x okay so at this point uh, those of you who are sort of watching the video uh, i would encourage you very much to try and uh, you know try your hand at this problem first uh, but you know maybe pause the video and and try it but uh, let me go on now uh, for those who want a little bit more of a hint to you know try this problem here's the the very first thing so observe what is it that we really want to prove so we are trying to prove the following that if i have two elements so let's let's proceed by contradiction here so suppose uh, one thing we could try is to try an argument by contradiction so suppose these two equivalence classes are actually equal to each other in the free group what does that mean it means that uh, if i take a and i multiply it by b inverse i should get the identity in the free group okay now what does that mean well if you recall what the inverse of b was this is just b prime so this is the identity and now this uh, concatenation Uh, the product of a with b prime is just the concatenation which is the word a b prime is the identity so the final thing that you you really need to do is to derive a contradiction from this fact so what do we finally conclude that a b prime is equivalent under that rewriting rules equivalence relation to the empty word okay so this is the this is what it means for uh, the equivalence class a and b to be equal to each other okay so at this point again those who would like to use this hint to try this problem i would encourage you to pause the video and sort of try your hand at it okay so um, let me move on so here is sort of the final solution uh, to this problem so recall from the hint that this is sort of what we we assumed that uh, we proceeded by contradiction if we assume that a equals b then we concluded that ab prime this word is equivalent to the empty word okay so this is of course thought of both thought of as words in the um, augmented alphabet s hat now why is this a contradiction where is the contradiction going to come from so observe what does this equivalence mean so let me start with the empty word so i'm saying the empty word is equivalent to the word ab prime which means that from the empty word i can find a sequence of rewriting steps basic rewriting steps or a chain which will finally get me to the word ab prime okay so each of these these arrows is a basic rewriting rule now i claim the following that when you apply a basic rewriting rule to uh, the empty word what you get at every step so each of these words here each of the words in the in the chain has the following uh, property that it has an equal number of a's and a primes 
Okay, likewise B's and B primes, but let's focus on one of the alphabets. So I claim that uh, every W that is equivalent to the empty word has an equal number of A's and A primes. Okay, A and A dash, there should be an, uh, the same number of these two in the uh, word W. Okay, and the proof is well more or less clear. We just have to look at what a basic rewriting rule does. It either inserts, so this is just uh, follows from what the basic rewriting rules were. It either takes uh, a a dash. If you have an occurrence of a a dash, you can replace it by the empty word. So, uh, or conversely, you if you have the empty word, empty subword, you can replace it by a a dash. Now observe that these two processes, uh, what happens here is if I have a word, uh, so, so for example, if a word has an equal number of A's and A dashes and I take a subword, so here's a word and let's assume this word has an equal number of A's and A dashes and what this first basic rewriting rule says is I take, say suppose there is an A and an A dash which occur consecutively then this rule says I am allowed to delete that from my word to obtain my new word, right? Now, if my original word had say 10 A's and 10 A dashes, then the new word will have 9 A's and 9 A dashes. So, it will continue to have an equal number of A and A dashes, okay? Now, the other rewriting rule is even simpler. It says I can either replace B B dash by the empty word or the empty word by B B dash. Here, uh, since I am only focusing on the alphabet A, if my word has some number of A's and A dashes and suppose I apply this rewriting rule, then the number of A's and A dashes in the, in the new word does not change because all I am doing here is taking a BB dash and making it uh, empty or taking the empty word and making it BB dash. Okay? So I would encourage you to play with some examples to get a, an actual idea of what we are doing. So the key point here is that if you take the empty word and no matter which one of the basic rewriting rules you, you apply and you keep applying it successively, at every step, the number of uh, every word you get has the following important property that the number of A's and the number of A dashes in that word are equal to each other. Okay? Now, that automatically implies that in this chain, you cannot finally end up with this word AB prime. Okay? Why? Because this final word that we have, it has one occurrence of A and zero occurrences of A dash, right? So, this word has an unequal number of, of A's and A dashes. So, this word could not possibly have arisen from a sequence of basic rewriting rules applied to the empty word, okay? So, that is the, the first example. So, this was a simple enough uh, thing we were just trying to understand what basic rewriting rules do to the number of A's and A dashes and in fact this is related to the example in one of our earlier videos in which we said uh, the free group on a single uh, alphabet single letter is isomorphic to the group of integers and if you remember the homomorphism there was just given a word you associate to it the number of A's minus the number of A dashes okay? this is more or less the same idea. Okay, so let us move on to the, the second example. So, here is the question. It says, if I have two elements of S, then prove that, uh, which are unequal, then prove that in the free group, the product AB is not the same as the product BA. Okay, so I hope the question is clear. If you take two elements of S, which are not equal, then the corresponding elements in, in the free group, the, the equivalence classes of A and B do not commute with each other. And again, this is a good place to stop and uh, stop the video and sort of try your hand at this problem. So, I would very much encourage you to do that. Okay. Now, uh, here is a hint. So, let us sort of proceed the way we did earlier, which is to try and see what we can get by a contradiction argument. Suppose we, we proceed by contradiction. So, let us do contradiction. So, suppose we assume that A B is the same as B A. 
okay then by the same reasoning as before uh, the left hand side is a b uh, the equivalence class of the word a b the right hand side is the equivalence class of the word b a and if those two equivalence classes are the same it means a b and b a are equal to each other or, or are equivalent to each other in fact we can sort of do the same thing that we did before since of writing it in this way let me do what i did to the earlier problem which is um, sorry if a b equals b a uh, let me do it to the next step uh, i can replace uh, the right hand side i i put them both onto the left hand side as inverses so this means a b a inverse b inverse is the identity okay and now again as before a inverse and b inverse are just the equivalence classes of the words a prime and b prime so this means that this is the identity and that in turn implies that a b a prime b prime is equivalent to the empty word okay so we are sort of in a similar situation as an example one we have a word which is equivalent to the empty word okay but observe unlike the earlier example we don't get an automatic contradiction because this word here a b a prime b prime has an equal number of a's and a primes it has one a and one a prime it has one b and one b prime okay so at least it satisfies that primary requirement for a word to be equivalent to to the empty word it's a necessary condition but we still somehow need to get a contradiction out of this okay so it will turn out we have to prove that this can't be the case that a b a prime b prime can't be equivalent uh, to the empty word okay and since what i'm trying to do here is to give you a hint to do this problem use instead so here's the way to proceed we'll use the universal property okay so try to come up with a way of using the universal property of free groups to prove that a b a prime b prime can't be equivalent to the the um, to the empty word or equivalently that uh, a b cannot be the same as b i mean whatever we need to prove okay so let me move on to the solution next again i would encourage everyone to pause here and try your hand at it okay so here's the here's the proof which uses uh, uh, a very nice application of the uh, universal property so what we do is the following so recall what does the universal property um, look like it says the following take any group k so what all do you have to choose you must choose a group k and you must choose a map this is another choice here you must choose a function any set map from the set s to k okay so you choose these two things k and f and having done that what the universal property says is i have a map from the free group to k it's a group homomorphism so main properties it's a group homomorphism okay and further uh, f tilde has it's related to f in the following way f tilde of j of x is just f of x in other words the diagram commutes right so this diagram commutes that was what the universal property said and there is a uniqueness as well which we won't really need in this example okay so if you choose k and f cleverly enough you should be able to prove what we need to prove in this case that these two are not the same okay so let's do that uh, let's make the following choices so for k i will choose k uh, to be any non abelian group okay so let's pick a non abelian group and well what's one of the easiest examples well you can pick k to be say the symmetric group s3 okay so for concreteness let's pick uh, an actual group i take k to be s3 the symmetric group okay now i need to define my map f so to define my map f uh, let me pick the following i'll pick two auxiliary elements so i have a non abelian group k now let me pick two elements a and b from this group k let a b belong to this group k uh, b non commuting b such that ab is not equal to b so i have picked a group 
S3 and now I have to pick two non-commuting elements from this group. So let me pick them as follows. So I take A to be the 2 cycle which means it is so it written in cycle notation it is 1 2 and if you recall our uh, notation in terms of permutations it is uh, 1 2 3 1 2 3 so 1 it is a bijection of the set 1 2 3 1 goes to 2 2 goes to 1 and 3 goes to 3 so this is the permutation A the permutation B is a similar thing it is 2 3 so again in terms of our diagram it is 2 and 3 are exchanged and 1 goes to 1 okay so 1 2 3 1 2 3 okay so that is uh, the definition of A and B now having chosen these two non commuting elements let us define this this function f next so what is f f is as follows from the set s to k so s has these two distinguished elements a and b so let me map a to capital a this element here b to capital b okay uh, and well, of course there are lots of other elements potentially in s and I do not really care what I do to them. So, I, I can send them to any element, uh, you know, to different elements even of k. So, I can send each of them to any element of k. Okay. So, if you want something concrete example, I can take, I can send all of them to the identity of k if you wish. Okay. So, this choice really does not matter. You can do what you want. Okay. So, I hope this is clear so far. I have picked the group of uh, I, I in general I can pick any non abelian group I can pick any two non commuting elements a and b in that non commuting non abelian group and I will define my function f to be the one which sends small a to capital A small b to capital B and it it does whatever it wants to the remaining elements of my set ok. So, having done this let us see where does that uh, put us. Uh, the universal property now says by the universal property of free groups we conclude that there is a map f tilde a group homomorphism from the free group to the group k satisfying the following property that f tilde maps the equivalence class of x to whatever f does to x. Now, in particular, so this is the important property here, it is a group homomorphism. Now, in particular, let me see what, so I will take x to be a and b, those two specific elements. So, f tilde of a gives me f of a, so that is my element capital A in k, f tilde of b is my element f of b, which is b. Now, uh, let us apply, uh, let us get our contradiction, let us go back to the original question. Now, suppose it were true that A B is the same as B A, we will see how our map F tilde is going to help us. Let us do the following, let us apply F tilde to both sides. So, these, these two elements here, I mean these two sides of the equality, they are both elements of the free group. I apply the homomorphism f tilde to each of them. So, f tilde will take the left hand side to an element of k and the right hand side to an element of k. So, let us see what is f tilde of, of the left hand side. So, okay. So, I am going to apply f tilde to both sides and this is what I get. Now, comes the important thing. Remember, f tilde is a homomorphism. Okay, and this is now a product of elements. So, this is going to be f tilde of A times f tilde of B and that of course by choice is A B. If you do it to the other side, it is going to give you f tilde of B times f tilde of A that is the element B A. Okay. So, what do we conclude? If this equality holds then it must also be true that a b is the same as b a ok. But that is a contradiction because we specifically chose two elements a and b which are uh, non commuting ok. So, in some sense the so that completes this proof here in some sense the broad idea of, of these sorts of proofs is the following any property that you want to show holds in the free group for example, that a and b do not commute you try and, and produce a concrete group in which you, you and 
certain elements in that concrete group which don't have that property okay so i have to show if if i have to show for example the ab is not equal to ba uh, one way of doing it is this you know find a group in which there are two elements a and b where ab is not equal to ba and then you know you just map uh, these elements small a and small b to capital a and capital b okay so we'll we'll see another example of this kind and uh, hopefully things will become clearer so moving on to example 3 so following if i have uh, a set s and i take an element a in the set s prove that uh, the nth power of that that uh, equivalence class is not the identity okay so this is uh, we claim that this is not the identity in the free group for any any value of n greater than or equal to 1 in other words the element a is not of finite order the claim is it has infinite order okay and again uh, pause the video think about it and in this case the hint is well the same thing use the universal property okay and sort of study how example 2 worked and see if you can prove this in a similar way okay moving on so here's the the proof uh, again similarly i just need to pick a, a group k so i choose k uh, to be an infinite group uh, to be an infinite group which has an element of infinite order okay which has an element of infinite order hey, i mean it can be this general if you want but let's let's be very concrete here suppose i take k to be so let me choose k to be the group of integers under addition and let me take an element of infinite order in this group so i will take a to be the number 1 so observe that this number a has infinite order has infinite order because you know what what is a power n in this group well a power n is just a plus a plus a n times because the operation is just addition and that by definition it's 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times which is the number n okay and the number n can never equal 0 which is the the additive identity in the group set right so 1 the element 1 in z has infinite order okay so we have found a group with an element of infinite order and now let's just use the the universal property as follows so i take my set s and to the group k i define my function f as follows this special element a that i'm looking at i will map it to this element of infinite order and all the other elements i don't really care i can map it to any elements of i mean different elements of z different x's can map to different elements for example Okay, so I don't care about the rest. So I define a function s uh, f from s to z, and by the universal property, what does that give me? It gives me there exists a group homomorphism f tilde from the free group to z, such that f tilde of x is f of x for all x in s and as you can imagine in particular all we are going to do is just take this particular value of x which is a so in particular if i look at f tilde on a this is going to give me capital a okay and now we'll derive the contradiction in much the same way that that we did earlier as follows so now for the contradiction now suppose a power n is the identity in the free group and let's do the following we'll apply f tilde to both sides okay now f tilde on the left hand side again we have to use the fact that f tilde is a homomorphism so f tilde of a power n equals f tilde of the identity 
Now, on the left hand side, f tilde of a power n, because it is a homomorphism, is the same as f tilde of a the whole thing power n, which in turn is just a power n, okay, where this is of course the operation in the so this is 0 in z. So, this is the 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 operation in um, if you wish the, the operation the integers. So, this is actually okay. So, let us let us do it this way a power n which, which means a plus a plus a n times which because a is 1 this is just the number n okay. And now, here is your contradiction. So, what we are really using here is that the element a has infinite order it cannot have finite order. So, the contradiction now is this. So, we have shown that n equals 0 okay, and that is the contradiction. Okay, So, we have proceeded by contradiction. We have assumed that the element a has finite order and concluded that this element capital A would have to have finite order okay, and that is the contradiction. Okay, So, now for the last example which is uh, show that there exists a surjective homomorphism group homomorphism from the free group to the group S3 of uh, permutations of 1, 2 and 3. Okay, So, again think about it uh, pause the video here. Now, here is a hint uh, how do you construct homomorphisms from free groups. So, hint how does one construct homomorphisms from free groups to other groups? Well, all you have to do is to just construct just a set map, construct an appropriate function from just a set A B to the group S3. It is just a it has no additional property, it is just a function. If you construct an appropriate function, then use the universal property use the universal property to obtain a group homomorphism from the free group okay so in some sense a group homomorphism from the free group to another group this information is really in some sense the same information as just a, a map of sets from the set a b to s 3. Okay, So, if you are asked to construct this guy then it is sort of enough to construct the guy on top. Okay, Of course, you should do it in such a way that the, the resulting homomorphism has the properties you want. Okay, So, focus on this try to find an appropriate function from the set a b to s 3. Okay. So, again pause and think about it using this hint. Now, here is the, the solution proof. So, let us do the following. So, let us construct a function from a b to s 3 first from the set a b which is the set s to s 3. Let me say a and b. So, let us do the following. Let me map a to the cycle 1 2 and b to the cycle 2, 3. Okay, these were the very same two things that we called capital A and capital B in example 2. Okay, so, let me map A and B to these two guys and let me look at uh, the, the let us call this F and let us use the universal property. This therefore, induces a group homomorphism from here to S 3 which is called F tilde. Okay, so, there exists a group homomorphism from the free group to S3, let's call this F tilde. And what does this guy do? It sends A to this cycle A, B to this cycle B. Okay, so I know the existence of this by means of the uh, universal property. Now, here's the important thing. Our claim is that this is the map we want. Claim F tilde is surjective. So, recall surjective just means on to. So, we claim f tilde is an on to function. Okay, why should f tilde be on to? Well, here is what we know. What does it mean to say that f tilde is on to? It means that the range of f tilde is the entire group 
S3. Okay. But observe, here is what we know about the range at least. So, observe that because F tilde is a homomorphism, the range of F tilde, the range of a homomorphism is always a subgroup. A subgroup of the, the group on the right, the codomain. Okay. So, if I have a homomorphism because f tilde is a homomorphism, okay. So, a simple exercise if you have not seen this before. Now, what more do we know? We know that this element capital A and capital B both belong to the range. Okay, so, the range is a subgroup of S3, it contains capital A and capital B. Well, then all you have to check is that you can, it, it has to contain all the other elements of S3 as well. In other words, I can get every other element of S3 by sort of taking products, for example, of, of elements A and B. Okay, so uh, well, let me leave that little bit as an exercise. So, exercise check that well another way of saying it is that the subgroup generated by capital A and capital B in S3 the subgroup of S3 generated by these two elements is actually the entire group S3 okay and how do we how do we check this well you you sort of have to keep taking various products and so on to see that you get every element so here's one example if i take one, uh, a b which is the cycle 1, 2 times the cycle 2, 3, then uh, you know we just have to check using the, the diagrams for example. Uh, what this does is, so the it is a composition of these two maps, so 2 goes to 3 under the second map, uh, 3 goes to itself, so this is 2 goes to 3, so I claim this is just a 3 cycle 1, 2, 3, in other words this is the map which sends 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 1. So, it is this cycle. Okay, similarly, if you, if you sort of look at B A, then you will get 1, 3, 2 and you know you sort of have to see what you will do to get the other element. So, here is the little exercise. What products of A's and B's will give you the, the element 1, 3 of S3. Okay? So, uh, the identity similarly, how will you get the identity if you wish? Try write in terms of A. Well, identity is easy, I suppose you can just say identity is A square. In other words, I just take A with itself, what I get is the identity. Okay. So, this just is another way of saying that every element of S3 is in the subgroup generated by these two elements capital A and capital B. So, of course, this means that the range has to be the entire group S3. Okay? So, that completes the proof. So, we have, we have used the universal property to construct a map and then we have shown that this map uh, has full range. Okay. Now, here is uh, sort of some additional questions for you to think about. Uh, is there any other such function? Are there other, other such functions? Are there other surjective homomorphisms? From the free group on two generators to S3. So we, we constructed one, but are there other other ways of constructing them? And maybe sort of related, but maybe slightly had a question. Uh, how many such homomorphisms are there? How many such surjective homomorphisms are there. Okay, it is a finite number. Okay, there are only finitely many of them. Your task is to try and find out exactly how many there are. Okay, so, uh, we will stop here.